Joining us now is someone who knows that state extraordinarily well, Michigan Democratic Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. Uh, so in these closing hours, I'm wondering what you think is moving the needle in your state. I mean, is it the 240,000 registered Muslims? And if they decide they ultimately cannot go with the Democrat, does that make the difference? Is it the gender gap? Is it we noticed at Michigan State yesterday, Donald, or Donald Trump or Kamala Harris did not say the words Donald Trump. Is it exhaustion? What is driving voters right now on the ground? So hello to all of you. And um, Michigan remains very tight. So when you have a tight situation like the one that we do, every vote matters. Uh, a month ago, I was worried and still focus on the union halls because that, as you will recall, was what made me warn you all Hillary Clinton was not going to win in 216. It was those union halls. I've been in a union hall for three or four of them every day for the last uh, few weeks. And union workers, as they realize that Donald Trump is how he talks that someone should be fired if they won't work. Uh, well, a strike line, uh, how many jobs we lost in manufacturing. Not everybody's back, but they've come home. Uh, there was an African-American young male problem. They're, not everybody's back, but they're, you know, in, in, in the black churches and some of the ones that raised issues a month ago, when they've really done the comparison, they've come home. Young people are energized. We're turning out the vote. We've got record numbers already on my University of Michigan campus. Arab Americans are not monolithic. Some are going to vote for uh, Donald Trump. Not as many as you maybe think. Some are going to skip the top of the ticket. Some are going to vote for Jill Stein. And some are going to vote for uh, Vice President Harris. So every vote matters. And the gender gap is real here, too. We've had more women vote in early voting, which is, I think, a good sign. But look. We're as tight. This has been as an ugly, vitriolic, toughest election I have seen in my lifetime, and it is tight. And it was really tight for Hillary Clinton when she lost Michigan narrowly to Donald Trump. Donald Trump seems to have a certain, you know, hold on what used to we used to call the Reagan Democrats, maybe Macomb County and other places. But this Gaza war. Uh, and these appeals from Bernie Sanders, from Congresswoman Jayapal and others to the Arab and Muslim communities saying, you know, as bad, and this is their terminology, as bad as Joe Biden and Harris have been on Gaza, Donald Trump, with his calls to Netanyahu and with his saying, do whatever you need to do, BB, and he said this publicly, but do whatever you need to do to finish it off. Do you think that that is penetrating at all and that some of the un uncommitted, including the leadership, might be willing to not, you know, to vote for Harris rather than voting for the third party or staying home? Look, you need to understand that the entire community, people on all sides, the Jewish community and the Arab American community are raw and hurting and you can't take anybody for granted. But Abbas, who uh, was one of the vote leaders or, uh, of the uncommitted movement, has cut an ad for Kamala Harris. Quite frankly, I think that uh, Donald Trump coming into Dearborn on Friday uh, bothered some people. I don't, they're not coming out and telling people who's going to vote, but they've made it very clear, including the mayor of Dearborn, who tweeted on Friday, Donald Trump will never be my president. He has not endorsed. He has not said what he's going to do. But I heard from more people on Friday who are reminded of one of the first things he did. He said he was going to do it, and he tried to do it. He got stopped, was to ban Muslim travel, that he wants to deport them. He has a history of very negative anti-Muslim comments and reminding people, showing them in print and video of what he said has made a difference with some. 